Hunter x Hunter, episode 51. Oh, it's Neon. Wait, why is she out in the open? What our gangster princess wants, our gangster princess shall get. Hiding her in plain sight, huh? <laughs> you're gonna like it. You're gonna do it and you're gonna like it. Whatever Neon wants, Neon gets. That's just how it works. And in return, can we like get her to do a fortune for us? I feel like that would be insanely helpful right now. Please give me a vague insight into my future. AX. Brutal X Battlefield. Not exactly keeping a low profile. Um, wait, why did she- what was her excitement about going to the bathroom? She wanted to follow those girls. That feeling when you see people go into the bathroom and yeah, can't say I relate. I think we should maybe watch out for her, but okay. Melody may have saved Kripika's life. Glad they're on our side. That's how I feel about that. But he was entirely, entirely against it either. Right. Yes. And Melody quite succinctly stating the risk, the threat. Oh, Leon's friends left. They were the worst bodyguards. Guarding this merch. And that's when I knew he was gonna die. And it's a never-ending challenge too. This is obvious, but it's really not easy to determine the, the proper balance. I mean, the whole like, I'm sacrificing all this stuff, I'm doing this difficult and dangerous work so I can ride my bike someday. It's weird, right? Because you could probably ride your bike around the world now. It's just kind of like, how well and how comfortably do you want to see the world on your bike? And like, at what point do you decide to do that? I'm like going through a lot of existential questions in this realm recently. I went on a trip to clear my head and it did the opposite. It like made me wonder, it, you know, sometimes if you have so many interesting new choices laid out in front of you. It's a really wonderful thing. It's important to stay grateful, but like sometimes it can make things more confusing. It's a big world. There are a lot of options, way more than are immediately obvious, and you really can't do it all. I guess the fundamental question that underpins all this is current versus future utility. Hard to pin down the optimal point, but more obvious at the, the negative extremes. Like if you're totally foregoing your entire life or this imagined future life you, you'll have one day, that's I think clearly a mistake, right? Because there's no guarantee you'll ever get it anyway. And that becomes especially and painfully obvious when you could have some semblance of that thing right now. At the same time, generally speaking, it seems like the more you focus on increasing your output long term, delaying satisfaction until later, assuming you're actually working towards it productively, means you are increasing the quality, quantity of great things you can enjoy utility from in the present of the future. This is just a small scene that I'm blowing up, but I actually feel like this is really critical to the whole Nen thing and to Go and Clues journey. But maybe I should come back to that. Uh oh. <laughs> She fell in. Five girls came out. Five girls came out. I should have seen that coming. Damn it. The deception. That's what it was. Four girls went in, five girls came out. My Nen is not not developed enough. And this was inevitable, like from the beginning. We knew she was going. And just walks out after removing her disguise. Oh ho ho, ho damn. And even more characters. This is insane. Even more high-powered characters. Yo, the fact that Kuropika is in the same room, in the same mission, with Kalua's dad, is crazy. Classic. So is this Kalua's grandfather? Zeno is a color now, you can accept it. <laughs> Oof, they're just on a different energy entirely. <laughs> yeah, okay, there it is. Yeah, Kripika never met him. I thought, she, I thought he was going to say, like, we need to be cohesive as a group, but okay. That's so irrelevant. This is matter in the, in the face of what's happening right now. Yeah, it is sad and disappointing. Kurpika is all in. Just all in. He says, clearly impressed by him after complimenting him on his rapid ascension to the ranks of the Mafia. 
Tell me about it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm with Nostradamus Nostrati. Yeah, it's kind of weird to think about. I'll speak for myself. I think for a long time growing up, I, I looked at the law as like an entity. It was like this thing that had a, an existence of its own outside of all the people that are participating in it, with it, enforcing it, making it, etc. And you maybe could look at it that way. There is something to that, but more so than I expected. I think the truth is more on the side of the spectrum where it's like, it's just people making choices. And so like any number of things can happen at any given time, just depending on the people that are involved. There are a couple of weird takeaways from that. Like one, you're not really safe. Like the law doesn't protect you necessarily. If somebody wants you bad enough, they'll get you. Two, within reason, you're probably all right circumventing the law if you're doing it logically and with open eyes about the risks and the consequences. But three, and most importantly, there are much, much higher authorities to answer to than law. Law is sort of like, code of conduct starter pack. Also for the record, this is not a cynical take, like everything's so corrupt, blah, blah, blah. It actually does seem to work pretty well in a lot of places. It's more like, it's a lot more liquid and flowing than I thought it was growing up. I told you, I told you, the only person I trust with Neon is Kurapika. That's a choke on this cigar. There it is. <laughs> I don't know, she's pretty crafty. <laughs> of course she did. Of course she name dropped her daddy. Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh, wow. Wow, the table's just turned significantly. Man, she's in a lot of danger. They say she can't see her own future. <laughs> Would you want to know? Would you want to know your neon fortune? Well, I guess it makes sense because it's not set in stone. You can change things. Is there anything Kurpika can't do? I guess the answer is no. <laughs> no. With, with his net power. Um, I'm scared this might end up being a fortune for Neon, just like, indirectly. If only I could read Hunter x Hunter. Here it is. Thank you. We got something out of that. Are there 12 members of the Phantom Troop? Someone's gonna die. Uh, maybe Uvogin was the death. It's turning into a really romantic date. Also, he really cleans up. Yeah, there's some truth to that. There's something similar to that and my video philosophy. The negative is easy, tearing things down is easy, and there's a place for that for sure. I think the, the thing of paramount importance is honesty. And sometimes what's honest is also critical and negative. But because the negative is sometimes just so much easier and obvious, and it like doesn't by itself do anything good, like in order for something really critical, you know, destructive to be useful, there has to be something added after, something built, something constructed out of the destruction in a death and rebirth type cycle. For me personally, I think it's more interesting. It just feels better to look into something and try to find the, the good thing in there what's good what's positive what's useful what's constructive anyone everyone can tear things down the challenge is building things being additive that was a really amazing scene series of scenes like super heartfelt great for both neon and crollo showing she's not just you know spoiled gangster princess there's a real depth to her and to him like a sentimentality and an, an elegance a grace oh there's more oh uh -oh. oh, wow. So he's going to win, but Kurpika is going to do some damage. Maybe Ahsoka doing some damage as well. Hmm? 
してやろうと思ってね。何それ。さっきまで暴れ。What did you just do to my girl? Alright, you just knocked her out. 天文の中へ入れるなとの命令だ。なんだと。もしものことがあったらどうすんだ。Yeah, there you go. That, that was the crucial detail that they needed. Hope your nan's up to snuff. It doesn't even show up. Oh, but he saw it. Oh, damn, that's insane. And another character. Oh, wait, this is the bounty hunter from before. But there's someone coming, some people coming in an ambulance. It's a trap. y e a n spends half of her, her <laughs> anime appearances in bed sleeping. That was honestly an amazing job by Krolo. Forget the option. Priorities. Krolo's gotta be something else. You figure, being the leader of the Phantom Troop. But so charming, so elegant on the outside. Oh, he jokered him. I've come to realize a big part of attraction, or like one common element you find in charisma, and speaking from personal experience, unfortunately, the people I end up liking is a duality of two interesting things that might seem contradictory. For example, someone who has the outward demeanor and appearance of being really sweet, innocent, but like has this sort of tangible darkness that. You can see leaking out. There's something really thrilling and enticing about that. I say this in relation to Krolo because, you know, he's this ruthless killer. Yet we just got a glimpse of him as the sort of Bruce Wayne style good listener, sentimental, deep, well put together soul. Very interesting. What a transition. <laughs> transition into this guy's neck breaking. Like he's pissed about u b o g i n They could have just let all these henchmen stay home tonight, have the night off, and it wouldn't have made a, a damn bit of difference. Wow, this music. This guy is absolutely <laughs> terrifying, horrifying. I guess this is their melody. Wow, what a shot. <laughs> I can't believe that. Whoa. This is amazing. God, this is such a, just a montage, but it looks so cool. What a highlight reel for them. And Ahsoka just watching. Uh, weirdly, Kurapika like, is, is essential, integral to this whole, whole thing. Wow. Can't say I'm surprised, but. Why does this remind me of Ghetto or Fake Ghetto? Another connection. Remember when we couldn't show beheadings? That half an hour difference in the time slot really changed a lot. And this is the melody, the symphony. This is how the Phantom Troop mourns. And it keeps going. It's unreal. It's unreal. <laughs> Army just smiling along. They're amazingly cohesive. They're amazingly cohesive for a group of murderers and thieves who are like free to replace each other through murder. <laughs> oh, and the. The outro is the Requiem, man. That's a brilliant touch, too. Wow, that was one of the most impactful scenes I've seen in a, in a very long time. It's so cool. The characters in the show are so awesome. You, you like, forget <laughs> what side you're on, you know? It's like, yeah, like, let's rain hell on the earth for <laughs> Uvogin. Because we loved Uvogin after <laughs> two episodes. Phantom Troop, so much more than, you know, just the evil of the week or whatever. Evil of the Arc. Goon, Kalua, Hunter Obituary. What's gonna be today? I think it's alive. And like twist eight billion people's necks in seconds. Wow, I'm I'm stunned. We hadn't fully seen a lot of their abilities up to this point. And in this episode, we just sort of got flashes of it in a montage, but still well done, well directed, with the absolute carnage mixed with Krolo's fortune teller monologuing, mixed with 
the, the Requiem. It really feels like a war is beginning. The benefit, the greatness of having built the characters so well is that it's one of those situations with multiple factions, multiple sides. I mean, we have the Phantom Troop, we have Hisoka in the Phantom Troop, we have the Mafia, we have Kurapika who's with the Mafia but has his own agenda, we have Gon and Kalua and Leorio, and we have Kalua's dad, all or most of whom are, are really interesting, really well developed. So it's just a, a wild ride.